So okay, welcome to everybody. I apologize that we are running late tonight. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Tuesday, January 15th. 2019 and we are honored tonight to have some of the tr scouts from the uh, Hopkinton Scout Troop 4, the Weeblow Scouts, who have agreed to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Step right up, gentlemen. You start us off. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very nice much. Nice job, fellas. Nice job. I, I appreciate you waiting all this time. Prior to our opening meeting, and this is the reason for our long delay, uh, the board met in executive session to consider litigation strategy with respect to the petition of Eversource Energy for a zoning exemption from the DPU, to consider litigation strategy with respect to TJA Clean Energy LLC versus Hopkinton Planning Board, and to consider the purchase, sale, lease, or value of real property in relation to Open Space Preservation Center, Strail Town Hall, and the Main Street Corridor, and this is because the chair declares that discussion in open session will be detrimental to the litigating or negotiating position of the board. Madam Chair. Mr. Herr. I did not participate in any dialogue specific to item two under the contract negotiations, litigation, real property agenda. No, you didn't. And um, because of time constraints, we actually did not discuss the uh, land sale issue. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, before we get started um, with, our, with our regular uh, meeting, i just like to give a formal hello. Uh, tonight we are honored to have, I see, um, the very fine and qualified gentleman who has agreed to be the town's chief financial officer. His name is Mr. Tim O'Leary. I see him in the back of the room. Would you like to just come up for a minute and say hello to us, Tim? Come see. We had the chance to welcome Tim a few weeks ago, but it was by remote participation, That's so right. it was sort of a disembodied voice. So here's the real thing. Welcome aboard, Tim. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is this Arizona, it's Tim? Great to hear you. Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> Mexico. It comes from Los Alamos nuclear facility. That's right. <laughs> so welcome aboard. We're Thanks. very glad nice to be here, here, Tim. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, we have a consent agenda with a number of items, and I will read them all. Um, we, oh, I'm sorry. Is there a public forum? And I mu and I must mention we because we're running so far behind. At seven o'clock, there is a posted public hearing, so I may need to interrupt this just to address the posted public hearing. Um, but first of all, we usually do have a public forum. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak? Two gentlemen, Mr. Terry. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Tom Terry, 17 Pleasant Street. Oh, no, Maple Street. I moved 10 years ago. Two items I have, a couple questions, probably for the town manager, but through the board. Um, I'm concerned, Madam Chair, about the traffic light down at Legacy Farms. It's been an ongoing delay about when that light is going to go in, and I know there are there are a thousand reasons, but I have one that I'd like to see it put in before somebody gets hurt down there. So I was wondering if we could find out what's the report of progress on that and why that light is not in. It not only has to be a light because it's it's on a, a curve, both both entrances to it are on a curve and a circle mm -hmm. and a uh, a hill. So I think it's something that we should move forward as a board, and is there some way that the, so could I speak to Norman about this directly? I can have Mr. Kamalo address you. My understanding when those plans were approved, that there were certain stages and certain sort of trip points 
which would call for the next stage of development. Um, and I think the traffic light was a part of that. I, I agree with you for the need for that. Um, my recollection in the plan was there was a certain level of development before it would be it would be called in, um, unless we have the ability to to um, you know request that sooner, which perhaps we will. Uh, does some of our town staff have more information? That's my recollection from when I was on the planning board. Yeah, through the chair, uh, Mr. Terry. Thank you so much for uh, your continued interest in making sure that uh, the traffic light is installed uh, sooner rather than later. Right. In fact, this matter is on the planning board's agenda uh, at its next meeting. Uh, preliminarily, I believe and I understand the consultants are recommending that the light be installed. Good. Has the traffic study been done? Yes. And it's uh, successfully qualified to have the light put in? I have not read the, the complete study, but my understanding is that the, the consultants are recommending that the traffic light be we had, we had another accident down there this week, too. Mm -hmm. uh, that was my one thing, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Norman. The other issue that I have is the uh, progress on the center school uh, reuse committee. And I know they were here two or three months ago and they had a, there was a packet that had been made up about what was concluded, mm -hmm. and they had a study done, and it was to be turned over to the, uh, the uh, permanent building, building, permanent PBC, the Permanent Building Committee, and the Permanent Building Committee was to meet with Norman, and uh, I've asked continuously in various areas of the town as to when we can get this meeting, because I'd like to attend it and boot it along a little, because there should, should be something on the agenda for the annual town meeting this year regarding at least some, some, some consulting, some study, some planning money. Mm -hmm. Because there are many um, facets of the town, like the, a town, maybe a town center they were talking about, a youth center. Uh, the school was planning on using it for a little thing for storage and maybe some teaching of, of some of the uh, special needs uh, groups. And the library, there were dozens of people that wanted to use it. And if this can move along, they could get going. But the most important thing, in my mind, is the building sitting idle and deteriorating. Mm -hmm. It's got to be heated. It's got to be monitored. First thing you know, people are going to be throwing stones at the windows. It's, it, it needs attention. And this is something that needs some deadlines, and uh, it needs the deadlines followed up. And I was wondering if there's any progress in that, in that uh, subject. Um, I can tell you that the Board of Selectmen turned that over to the building, the Permanent Building Committee. They have been working on it. Um, my understanding, I believe, and Mr. Kamala can fill us in a little bit more, is that they, they will be preparing some kind of an article for town meeting because we understand we don't want to miss this funding cycle. We need to get moving with some, you know, engineering and some, some concrete, no, no pun intended, uh, progress towards it. For all those reasons that you just said, we want to do it, um, Smartly, we want to just don't want to rush into something until we've done all our homework. But at the same time, as you said, the longer a building stands idle, the more problems that do occur. So I, there, there haven't been any public reports, but my understanding is the committee is moving ahead uh, and moving ahead with recommendations to bring to town meeting to move the process forward. Am I not? Am I correct in that, Mr. Kamal? Yes, you're correct. Um, in fact, we plan to have a placeholder article uh, on the town meeting warrant in relation to center school. Uh, the Permanent Building Committee uh, did attempt to schedule meetings during the holiday seasons, but because of uh, conflicting uh, schedules, they were not able to do so. They are working on scheduling a meeting sooner rather than late. So what you're saying is there has been no meeting, there has been no decision making done, and everything is the same way as it was when they were assigned the project two months ago. No, that's not what I'm saying. There has not been a meeting, right? Because I talked to Dan McIntyre, who was the head of the PBC, and he had not had a meeting with his constituents or with the board, with, with you, yet. And this was last Friday. Oh, no, no, no. He, I, I have met with Mr. McIntyre. Uh, we have met also with uh, Dave Del Torrio. Uh, Mr. McIntyre did ask us to collect some background information for him. He has, that, he has um, the information that we collected for him. Okay. When the... When the um, 
committee that uh, Rick Flannery was the chairman of, uh, the, the reuse committee, finished their charge. They presented you, or someone presented you, with a so-called packet. We had a lot of information, and had, a lot of work had been done. You referred to that at the, the meeting back in November that I'm referring to. And that packet had a lot of information already to get that project started. Is that correct? There was yeah. very good information also from other studies that the town had done, namely the library feasibility study, as well as the feasibility study for the uh, Santa Elementary School. Excuse me, I, I need to interrupt for just a minute. We have a posted 7 o'clock public hearing, so I need to simply open that public hearing, and then we can pause that to continue our discussion. Um, we have a 7 o'clock posted public hearing for asset naming of the Fruit Street Property Access Road. This is the Board of Selectmen to hold a public hearing pursuant to its public asset naming policy to consider a proposal to name the main access road within the town-owned property at 66 Fruit Street for public safety purposes. Proposed names received for the access road are George Brown Way, Mary Pratt Way, Pratt Way, Pine Way, Sports Complex Way, or Stone Throwers Way. May I have a motion uh, to open the public hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And we will... No. Do I need any kind of a motion no. to put that on hold, or we can mm -hmm. just, now that we've opened it, just continue? There's no need for a motion. Okay. So anyone who is here for that, we will we will get to that article in just a moment. The public hearing has been opened. Madam Chair, specific to the issue that Mr. Terry raises, yes. which is a legitimate concern, I think, brought by him and many others share in town, uh, tonight would not be the night that we're going to make any traction to solve this problem, but I think raising it uh, to the board's level yep. and I'm directing Mr. Kamalo to get this resolved as soon as possible with Mr. Terry and others concerned, I think would be the next best step, or the, be the best next yep. step. Thank you, Mr. Herr. Could I have a date as to the soon? I don't like as soon as possible. I'd love to go out on a date with you, Mr. Terry, but I'm tied up right now. Um, <laughs> I might be involved with this. Date. You'll have to go, Mr. Co I don't know, Madam Chair, how you want to do that. I think a, a try to get a date soon would be ideal. Well, isn't next Wednesday the day when the uh, the article? Uh, February fifth. February fifth. The warrant will close. What's the twenty third of? Uh, um, that is for the special town meeting that we just opened this okay. week, February 11th. So I know that I know there is a committee and it's working on it. I know that they they are planning to put an article on the warrant so that we can get some funds needed. Um, I'd like to hear that they're going to meet in the next 10 days. Then I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kamal. <laughs> well, maybe what uh, we could yeah, do, we, I was going to say, yeah. inquire of the chairman when they're next meeting exactly. up and let you know that. Yeah. Because they and have I'll touch with you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. And they are Thank you very much, everybody. So you're going to call him tomorrow? Yes, I'll call Tom, I'll call Dan, I'll call Dave. When, the, when yeah. the next meeting is okay. Um, and I think, Mr. Tewitt, you had, you, uh, why don't you address the board as well? Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair. Jerry Tillett for Price Street. Um, I'd just like to take two minutes uh, to make a statement and then I'll make you an offer. Uh, recently I learned the Board of Selectmen has no written policy on outreach to community organizations by town officials hired or appointed by the Board. Our town officials as our representatives and yours currently are left to decide with no guidelines which organizations events they will support in their official capacity. I believe, given the climate of controversy we now live in, where it seems virtually everything is politicized, your outreach policy should be put in writing. Such a policy would flow. Did someone say something? Sorry. Uh, such a policy would flow from our town charter. The uh, charter welcomes residents of all races, ethnicities, religions, abilities, gender identifications, sexual orientations. The town further is committed to providing a climate of safety and acceptance to all residents. The town will actively address and resist acts of discrimination, bullying, or intimidation. It also states that elected and appointed officials and employees of the town shall not use their official positions to secure or grant special consideration, treatment, advantage, privilege, or exemption to themselves or to any other person beyond that which is available to every other person. In summary, 
Our charter requires town employees to support the goal of a welcoming, safe, and accepting climate free from discrimination, intimidation, and favoritism. The Board of Selectmen has verbally directed town officials to reach out in their official capacity to, to organizations without clearly specifying what the board intended, uh, to whom officials, officials are to reach out, or how. Officials are left to decide without guidelines to whom they will reach out, how often, and in what manner. The charter prohibition against special treatment and consideration might well be trampled, however well-intentioned the effort of our officials. For example, when outreach appears to be an official endorsement of an individual or group, when officials refuse equal access for any reason to similar organizations. In principle, outreach is desirable. Indeed, everyone in the community stands to benefit. It is important also in outreach that no member of our community is made to feel offended, discriminated against, threatened, or less secure in any way. I ask the board to initiate the effort to convert the verbal policy of community outreach to a written policy and I offer to do a draft of that policy and present it to the board. Thank you. We Any would questions? Welcome. If you have a draft that you want to bring, I think that's, that's a great starting point. Have something in writing that you've... I don't have anything now. No, Madam but you are. No, you're offering. I, I would take you up on your offer. <laughs> I didn't. I would love to do that for you. And uh, Please do. You can take it from there. Okay. I will do that. I would be in favor of that. Thank you. Thank you. Can you have it by the end of the meeting? <laughs> Pardon? Can you have it done by the end of the meeting? <laughs> I don't believe this meeting is ever going to end, Mr. Cookson. So let's move on. All right. <laughs> Moving forward. Um, we have a rather lengthy consent agenda, um, which can be taken at any time. I'm thinking where we had the pu public session. It was opened at 7, and there's some people who are here for that, that if other board members sure. don't object, I would like to take the... the uh, 7 o'clock item public hearing, and we can return to the consent agenda. Works for me. Okay. So, again, um, we are returning to our posted public hearing, and this is for a naming of the Fruit Street property access road. The fire chief for quite a while has wished that this road have a name for safety purposes, for identification purposes. Um, there are six suggested names um, again George Brown Way Mary Pratt Way or Road or Lane Pratt Way or Road or Lane Pine Way or Road or Lane Sports Complex Way or Road or Lane and Stone Throwers Way and to date the only public input that I have seen sent to the board um, simply stated one citizen felt it was not wise to name things after landowners or individuals um, in town. So, I'm opening this up to the public and to members of the board for input. Okay. Mr. Hurt? Um, so, I think by process of elimination, uh, with Mr. Brown having a nice statue on the common. I think he's been duly recognized in the community. And I would scratch that name. Uh, Sports Complex Way is beyond boring, so I would scratch that name. <laughs> Stone Throwers Way, I don't know all the history behind that. I'm sure some Ted's going to be glad to share it with me. <laughs> so so we'll do that offline. Um, I like uh, items B or C personally, but I'm open for discussion. So I feel very similar, <clears throat> similarly. Uh, George Brownway, uh, I like that we kind of do a lot of focus on him uptown at the Common with the statue and whatnot. Um, I would be amenable to B, C, or D. Uh, e is too generic. Um, uh, I like F, too. So um, I guess I would be amenable to B, C, D, F at this point. This end of the table, who would like to go first? Mr. Nasrullah. Um, personally, I like generic. Uh, I think Sports Complex Way makes, uh, makes sense. It's kind of telling you where you're going and for people coming to visit. Um, it would certainly, 
would be, <laughs> certainly be illustrative as to where they're going. Um, I'm interested in hearing the, uh, the background on Stone Thrower's Way, uh, but I'm not adverse to, uh, to B or C. And, and for me, E or F only because um, it's the Pine property and, and, the, and uh, the Pratt are across the street. We also own a bunch of Pratt property that we may have to put a lot, uh, some roads on eventually also. And so that would be appropriate to, to, to name, you know, Mary's land after Mary. Um, and then to just to, to, to you know, because uh, I would feel bad if we name it Pine, then I feel bad for the Pratts. If I name it Pratt, then I feel bad because it's Pine property. So if we just pull them right out of it, Sports Complex Way, you know, that's where we have all of our fields. Um, and Stone Throwers, that brings us back in history, and I think that that's, a, that's, that's one that's good. So the sports complex way, that could be misleading. We put a uh, brand new turf field right here in the center of town, and that's where a good portion of our sports will be played as well. So um, <clears throat> I'm not saying your opinion's wrong. I'm not saying it's right, but I'm not saying it's wrong. Um, <laughs> and Stone, Stone Thrower's Way is, I mean, um, I don't want to get into a 20 minute dissertation of what the stone throwers were. It was what they called our sports teams back in the 40s and 50s and uh, all the way up until the 80s when I played youth football. And it was the stone, we were the stone throwers back then when it was just Hopkinton. Um, so there's a, a good contingent for, you know, the old timers in town. I even throw myself in there that stone throwers is a nice way to preserve the history of the town. Um, so. Uh, Pratt Way or Pine Way, I, I mean, it wasn't Mary Pratt's property, it was the Pratt family property. So um, uh, I can tell you that uh, I have had a conversation with Mary Pratt about this, and I will not go into detail on her comments, but they were very, very, very funny. Um, but it would be, uh, I'm sure it would be an honor for either family to have it named Pratt Way or Pine Way. We do have a member of the Pratt family here, I believe. Um, not here to speak. Not here to speak. He's just, he's just here to look good, I guess. Uh, so, um, I don't know. I guess we're going to put it to a vote. Well, if I, if I may weigh, weigh in, too, because we get a vote. You do? <laughs> um, I, I think Sports Complex Way is, is beyond boring, but... That's that's just me. That's two. That's a couple. That's <laughs> a couple of us. Um, with respect to Pratt Way, uh, <laughs> there's a Mary Pratt Trail up there, which has been named um, already. As you said, we do have other Pratt property, um, and as well as Pines. I, I I kind of understand and agree with where the citizen is coming from who did write to the board and say, I think we would do well to stay away from naming it after existing people, entities, um, sometimes for every individual that is honored, there is another individual who was not honored, who, and it engenders its own share of whether you want to call them jealousies or negative feelings or whatever, but, um, Naming it after individual members of the community sometimes can have its downside as well. So going for something more generic or less associated with an individual existing member um, can be a, a less conflict-free, shall we say, um, option. Um, the reason I like either George Brown Way or Stone Thrower's Way, um, George Brown is no longer a resident of town, but he was um, associated with so much athletics, both within the town and within the state, and that's, I mean, he's honored on the marathon for being the marathon, firing the marathon starting gun, but he had connections to the Boston Bruins. He had connections, I believe, to the Celtics. He had, he was father of many, many athletic entities, both within the town and within the state. So he's a huge athletic figure in the, in the community. Um, and the to Stone Throwers, again, is the traditional old time name for the Hopkinton athletic teams. 
um, where that name came from, for those of you who are interested. Um, when the train, which came through Hoppington, used to come up the hill from Ashland, and it was would go very slowly because it was plugging its way up the hill, and the kids had come down and they had a little game with the, with the firemen on the train. They'd throw stones at the train, all in fun, and the firemen would throw pieces of coal back at the kids, and the boys would pick up the coal and they'd take it home to their mothers to burn in their stoves, and it was a daily little game they always played, and the Hoppington boys became known as the stone throwers because they threw stones at the train to get the coal when it came up the hill from Ashland. Um, so, anyway, we, we don't have a... Um, so, so I think we've got a lot of variety here, but I go with George Brown or Stone Thurs. So the, just one more thing that's crossed my mind about Pine Way. We have a Pine Island and a um, Pine... What are the... Pine tree. Chief? Pine, pine tree. tree. So we have a couple of streets already that have the name Pine. So when, if you're calling for a, a medical emergency or, or mm -hmm. any type of emergency, I think that it might be... Um, a problematic. Yeah, it might be problematic. So I, I don't know if Pine Way would would work. So I'm taking D off of my list. So that leaves me Pratt Way and Stone Throwers Way. This is the public hearing. So if there are members of the public out there that would like to weigh in, you are invited. Seeing none. Who picked this list? What was the question? A variety oh, of yes. oh, it came from a variety of people. Oh, okay. And I'll just, some, some were already eliminated because they were too close to something else. Okay. I'll just, thank you. Right. Madam Chair, I vote that we uh, move that we close the public hearing portion of this dialogue. Second. Okay. All those in favor of closing the public hearing, say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. So we are not discussing this anymore. Well, uh, we well, can discuss it. We can it discuss it, but just not the public. Up, yeah. So I, I guess I could uh, I go stone throwers. So I go stone throwers. Would someone like to make a motion? So I I sat with Mrs. Pratt on the board for um, three or six years. I don't recall. Um, and while we were viewed in the community by some as being complete opposites, we in fact got along extremely well. Uh, she would slip me very interesting notes during the me during the meetings. Uh, sometimes I couldn't repeat the notes or publish the notes. She just had a way about her to make her point. Um, but we really had a great relationship, a very healthy relationship. And she had great passion for the town of Hoppington. I think to this day she still does. Absolutely. Um, and uh, I think it would be a great honor to name uh, the road after her. Um, if there's not broad support for that, I can understand, not because of Mrs. Pratt or any of those things, personal things, but just because of public safety and naming uh, assets and other policies that we have in place. But I just want to say that Mrs. Pratt was a, a great uh, pleasure to serve with, and she always had Hopkinton uh, on her mind, and she still does. Can I ask <clears throat> either Elaine or the fire chief, are, are there any roads that would conflict with Oh, with Pratt Way, Pratt Street, Pratt. No. and we definitely don't have another Stone Throwers Way. We have Stone Gate. Stony Brook. A, a, a lot of names had a little conflict, so we're trying to weed through them. Yep. So I like. I don't know. I like Pratt. I'd like to make a motion to name it Pratt Way. I'll second that. Okay. The motion has been made. And you are going for Pratt Way, not Mary Pratt Way. That's right. Pratt Way. Okay. We like way, not road, nor lane. Uh, Pratt, I don't care what the last connotation is. It doesn't make a difference to me, whichever the board finds to be most amenable. Are you happy with the way? Well, Chief, what's easier for you guys? My second was on Pratt Way. Okay. All right. so, uh, Does the Chief have any, any <laughs> preference way, road lanes? No. Okay. okay. 
right. So the motion before the board is for Pratt Way, which has been made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? No. Okay. No, it was the no, one no. Yeah. It was one no. Okay. That is unanimous then. Okay. Then Pratt Way. Thank you very much. And no offense to Mary Pratt with my no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Just going for the okay. Um, we will. I will go back to the consent agenda. Um, there are about five different items. Uh, the board of selectmen will consider approving the minutes from the December 18, 2018 board of selectmen minutes. Um, item two: St. John's Parish uh, special temporary alcohol license for the parish appreciation dinner. The board of selectmen will consider approving an application from Maureen Belger on behalf of St. John the Evangelist Church, 20 Church Street, Hopkinson, for a social, a special temporary alcohol license for the parish appreciation dinner to be held in the parish hall, Saturday, March 2nd, 2019, from 6:15 to 10 p.m. Expected number of attendees is 120, and invitations will be sent out for this event. Marty's will be supplying. The alcohol fee waiver has been requested by the applicant. Um, item three, St. John's Parish Special Temporary Alcohol License Youth Group Fundraiser. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving an application from Maureen Belger on behalf of St. John the Evangelist Church High School Youth Group for a Youth Ministry Fundraiser Dinner to be held at the Parish Hall on Saturday, April 6, 2019, from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Marty's will be supplying the alcohol for the event, and alcohol will be served by TIP-certified servers. Expected number of attendees, 125. A fee waiver has been requested by the applicant. Item four, resignation. The Board of Selectmen will consider accepting the resignation of Ron Clark from the Community Preservation Commission, effective December 31st, 2018. Item five, ambulance gifts. The Board of Selectmen will consider accepting ambulance fund gifts totaling $175 in memory of Kathleen Gross and gift totaling $150 in memory of Thomas Rory Robeson. And finally, item six, marathon fund requests. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving two marathon fund requests. From the post-prom committee 2019, a total request of $4,390 for seven games that will be part a post-prom celebration on May 10th, 2019 for, for Paul's Rental Supply, Lemonster, 3890 And for disc jockey Larry the Musical Dynamo, $500. And B, from the Hopkinton Police Association, a request for $1,500 for supplying fish for the annual Kids Fishing Derby on May 11th, 2019 at the Hopkinton Sportsman's Association. So, um, which items... If any, would board members like to pull out for a separate discussion? What's the board number four? Uh, Mr. Cortino, that is the resignation. Yep. I'll be five. What did you five. say? Number five for Mr. Tedstone. Uh, just checking where both these alcohol licenses ask, well, they both ask for a fee waiver. So, we can either understand that we're voting yeah, the fee so. waiver as well, or else pull mm -hmm. that out separately. No, we'll do, we'll do, the, okay. do the former. Everybody's happy. Okay, so the two items to be pulled out are the resignation and the ambulance fund gifts. Madam Chair, I move the Board of Consent, the Board of Select and Consent Agenda, items one, mm -hmm. two, two, three, so six. Yes, one is the minutes, yes. Okay, items one, two, and six. Three. Three, 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 three and six. six. Okay, one, two, three, and six. All those in favor of approving items one, board minutes, two, Paris Center dinner, three, youth fundraiser, alcohol center dinner uh, with, with fee waiver, and 60 marathon fund requests. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Item four, resignation of Ron Clark. Mr. Catino? Yeah, I just want to make sure that, that we and the Board of Selectmen and, and the town understand the um, uh, how much Ron Clark has uh, volunteered for the town and how much, uh, what a great job he's done on the CPC and the Board of Selectmen and, and very other committee, various other committees in the town and what an asset he's been. He's, he's, uh, he's always up there at town meeting, sometimes 
making it go a little longer, but uh, and always with that with the great comment. And uh, he's just got a mind like a steel trap. And uh, when it comes to numbers, uh, you never want to challenge him. But I just want to say thank you to Mr. Clark for for everything that he's done, and I really appreciate it. And make sure we get a letter out to him thanking him for his uh, service to the town. We do have that letter prepared, and I would add as well, many people know Ron also as having served on this board for many years, including as chairman. And within the CPC, uh, may, many people may not know that Ron or originally served on the study committee that looked at whether or not the town should adopt the CPC back in, I think it was, uh, I wrote it down here, was it 2011, I think? or 01, excuse me, 01, um, and Ron was a driving force behind uh, the town having the CPC, so big role. So I'd like to make a motion to accept the resignation <coughs> of uh, Ron Clark from the CPC. As an at-large member. Second. Second. Oh, okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Well, we're opposed, but I can't do much about it, right? <laughs> Okay, ambulance fund gifts. The Board of Selectmen will consider accepting ambulance fund gifts totaling $175 in memory of Kathleen Gross and a gift totaling $150 in memory of Thomas Roy Robeson. Um, Mr. Ted Stone. Yeah, so obviously any time that this comes up, I'm always the, the one that speaks up for it and what a, what a great charity it is. And um, it, it's a nice... Uh, lasting legacy. Uh, Kathy Gross was, um, her husband was a lieutenant on our fire department for a long, long, long time. Um, and her son is a, has been a firefighter for, I don't know, probably 15 years or so now. So, um, so even though she wasn't really so much a, uh, 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 an active member she she gave a lot by sacrifice. I mean, she sacrificed a lot by having her her son and husband out there um, giving it back to the town. So it's very appropriate that that uh, people are donating in the name of Kathy Gross, and it's nice to see that. And of course, um, you know, Roy Robson again. I, uh, it's just nice to see people giving uh, in in memory of these people to such a great charity. So thank you, and. I would like to make a motion to accept the $150 in the name of Kathy Gross, 170, I'm sorry, 175 in Kathy Gross and 150 for Roy Robson. Second. And before we vote on that, I would just like to publicly acknowledge the generous individuals um, in memory of Kathleen Gross, Alexis and Chris Miller, Theodore and Linda Petris Patriciak, Carol and Frank Gross, and Beatrice McMullen and to the ambulance fund in memory of Tom Robson, William G. Burke of the Burke Distributing uh, Corporation. So that motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, that is unanimous. Thank you. Okay. So now um, we have a joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen and the Commissioners of the Trust Funds. This is because the Board of Selectmen and the Commissioner of the Trust Funds will discuss appointing a temporary member to serve through the town election, that's through May 20th, 2019, um, for one spot that is open on the Commissioners. There has been one application received, and that is from Mary Dugan. So, is there anyone who from the Trust or Ms. Dugan who would like to speak to that? Janine Lock, uh, Chair of the of Trust Funds. Hi, Janine. So, um, if I may, I just wanted to say I do know Mary, uh, and I think she would be a great addition uh, to the Commissioners of Trust Funds, a longtime resident of Hopkinton, uh, active in the town. Uh, and personally, I'm grateful that she has volunteered um, to step forward and fill this vacancy. That's excellent. We're grateful. Are uh, there questions? If not, I would entertain a motion um, to nominate Mary Dugan to serve on the, as the Commissioner of Trust Funds until the next election uh, on uh, May 20th, 2019. Second. Was that moved? Someone moved? So moved. Moved. Okay. 
Okay. You're right. You, you, you can't make the motion. I forgot. Move second by Mr. Nasrullah and seconded by Mr. Cotino. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, that is unanimous. Tell Mary, thank you very much. Welcome yes. aboard. Mr. In the, Kamal? And the, rec the record will show that you voted in favor. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. I need to okay. <laughs> I wish I wasn't long enough. <laughs> I agree. Thanks. Okay. Oh, my goodness. We're, we're ahead of schedule. For now. For now. <laughs> ah. Mr. Kamala, was there a representative from Lycan that was coming? The, no, the, the next one is the host community agreement compliance statement. Oh, I'm sorry. That's why I'm thinking we're ahead because I'm on the, <laughs> the wrong agenda item. Okay, uh, 745, we're not too far off. Host community agreement compliance statement action. The Board of Selectmen will consider executing a statement indicating compliance with the host community agreement between REC Hopkinton LLC and Town of Hopkinton. This is... So through the chair. Through the chair. Marlo, can you please speak to this for us? Yeah, this is an administrative step. Um, it's driven by a provision in the host community agreement between the town uh, and REC Hopkinton relative to the Muse development, which basically says either party has the right to request a compliance statement during the term of the agreement. Uh, and in this case, we are recommending that the board sign the statement presented in your packet indicating compliance with the host community agreement. And the essence of the statement is that the agreement is in full force and effect and has not been modified, and there are no uncured defaults of any of the parties under the agreement. And that is correct. That is correct. Is that to date or is that in its entirety? To date. So there's still open items? The no, I don't, I don't believe there are any open items. I think they are specific items of interest to the community that we monitor regularly. Uh, most recently, we did request and were provided uh, a report indicating the compliance relative to uh, the affordable housing units. If we issue this statement of compliance, does that limit our ability to make sure other things that are still open don't or do get resolved or do get... Um uh, covered? It, it does not. Again, for the record, at this point, there's nothing open. So, to the best of your knowledge, we are in full compliance, as are they? Yes. Okay. Um, then I would request a motion to authorize the chair to sign the statement indicating compliance with the HCA between REC Hopkinton LLC and the town of Hopkinton. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And that's in my signature packet here. Is it? Okay. Um, Now, Mr. Kamal, like in, is a rep there's a representative going to be meeting with us? Y yes, I believe the team okay. is here, in fact. Okay, because I'm, I'm running ahead, so I don't want to jump ahead if <laughs> people aren't here. Okay, well, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, this is Lycan Bioscience LLC, and the Board of Selectmen will receive an update from Lycan Bioscience LLC regarding its interest to locate in Hopkinton, it's a TIF application, and related special town meeting preparations. So, welcome. We're very glad to see you tonight, and uh, happy you could be here and give us and the townspeople watching at home a little information on, on Lycan, which sounds like a great company for, for us. Thank you. Um, thank you for inviting us here tonight. Um, my name is Lynn Tokarczyk. I'm Government Incentives Consultant representing Lycan Bioscience. I'm here with Tony Rattuno, CEO of Lycan Bioscience, and David Dartell, um, right in back of me, CFO um, of Lycan Bioscience. Um, Harold Mahigian is also <coughs> present who is the uh, property owner of the proposed property. 
And um, I also know that there are some invited guests here tonight from the Chamber of Commerce that so they'll be walking in since we're, we are ahead of schedule. Well, um, so I'm sure you'll recognize them when they enter. <coughs> um, first of all, um, I'd like to say that it's great to be back here. I was, I've worked on several um, TIF projects in the past. Um, over the past 10 years or so, I was actually involved with um, working on the economic target area, the ETA. Um, several years ago, so it's um, it's nice and it's great to see all the transformation here and um, all the great amenities here in Hopkinton. So I first, I'd also like to thank Norman Kamalo, uh, the town manager, who has been very instrumental in his efforts um, with encouraging the company to expand here in Hopkinton, and as well as um, some of the other local officials, um, Elaine. Uh, Nazareth, thank you very much um, for all of your assistance and uh, the town assessor as well. So uh, we have a very brief um, slide presentation um, that we will share with you in basically three sections if this works for you. Basically, who is like in bioscience? What are their proposed expansion plans? And third, basically their intent to apply for tax incentives. So, uh, with that, I will um, turn it over to Tony. We're ahead of schedule, so take plenty of time. <laughs> okay. And thank you so much for inviting us here. Thank Tony. you for coming, making the time for us. Thank you, Lynn, Madam Chair and Board. Uh, I'd like to give a brief overview of Lycan Bioscience and uh, where our business strategy is uh, and our, uh, our want to come to Hopkinson. Uh, like in Bioscience is an emerging manufacturer of cell and gene therapies, very new uh, generation of uh, therapeutics. Uh, so new that there's only four approved currently, uh, but gaining a lot of traction. And it's, it's the next generation of uh, therapeutics uh, over and above beyond what we've seen before from biologics. Company plans to lead the way in manufacturing clinical products out of the Hopkins site uh, for immunotherapies of cancer and other uh, illnesses. I will say that our, our sole focus right now is oncology. Uh, that's where the greatest need is. Uh, that's where we see the greatest need. So that's, that's where we'll focus. Uh, immunotherapy is on a cutting edge of treatments that are less invasive than tra uh, traditional cancer therapies and they offer a promise of greater patient safety. Uh, this is personalized medicine for the most part. So we're using patient cells, patient's blood, uh, treat the blood at what would be the Hopkins site, send back to the patient very quickly with very little inventory or no, zero inventory, and then reinfuse the reinjected back into the patient, lights the patient's own immune system up to whatever uh, cancer they're fighting, breast, colon, lung, whatever the case may be. Uh, so the safety profiles are, are, are very good. Uh, Lycan plans to provide its products directly to hospitals and global pharmaceutical manufacturers. Currently, there's over 1,000 products in development, uh, a lot of them coming out of the Cambridge area. Uh, and certainly on the West Coast, but companies like um, Sanofi or Novartis, uh, but also Mass General, Harvard, MIT, uh, Boston University, any, any university that develops cell lines, uh, Stanford would be a great example too, Johns Hopkins, uh, they would be our customers, and any biotech companies that exist that are in development of these products. You can, anytime you want to ask a question, just stop me. If, if you... I, I do have a um... So are you making a product that then do, performs these processes for the individual patient, or do you do the actual patient uh, data analysis at your site, or is it both? We do not do the data analysis. We do the analysis on our product. Okay. Uh, we, will, we will solely be a manufacturer. Okay. Uh, these products okay. are developed elsewhere, research and developed elsewhere. We will manufacture, and we will also control the supply chain to and from the hospitals or the doctors, and then back to the patient. So are you getting patient information that comes into your company, or? We don't get patient information. We, we know we have a specific way to identify patient A from B, C, D, E, F, so there's no, no, no chance of a mix-up going back to the patients, but we do not know the specifics of the patient. So does the patient population you serve, can that be nationwide? They or? It is nationwide. It is nationwide. It's, yes. not, it's not localized. It's not localized, yeah. no, nationwide. You can, you can be providing services for someone in California. Yes. 
Yes. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but no, I no, no. It's a, understand what you're talking about. Thank you. Uh, Lichen Bioscience plans to choose locations for its clinical manufacturing operations, which we have we have chosen, and we have chosen Hopkinton, uh, specifically at this point in time, 97 South Street uh, facility. Uh, we've conducted searches in and out of the state, primarily in Arizona and uh, South Carolina to this point. I will say that we've done a, a national search. Uh, we've ended up with a, a small bucket of, of sites uh, that really fit the bill. One being that why would we choose Hoppington? Um, because access to airports is critical. So we have Logan and we have uh, TF Green and we have Worcester. Um, why? Because the patients, you know, we had the opportunity to work on the first approved product. Uh, so we have six years of experience with uh, the first uh, cell therapy approved for prostate cancer called Provenge. Uh, it was approved in 2010. Uh, since there's been two more. Uh, but very quick time frame back to the patient. In the case of Provenge, it was only 18 hours. Once manufacturing was complete, back to the patient, wherever they were in the country. We did 85% of our production out of a site south of Atlanta, uh, and those products, we did 80% of production out of Atlanta. We had a site in Seal Beach, California also. They took mainly California. But we could have distributed 95% of our products, even with an 18-hour time frame. So, uh, so access to airports are critical. Um, the access to talent uh, in Massachusetts, obviously, and we have a lot of built-in customers right here in uh, the Cambridge Metro West area. So, be a good place to start. Great place to start, actually. Right, and just to address the bottom bullet, so a property at 97 South Street has been identified as a viable option. Proposed investment plans. That site is about 64,000 square feet. Uh, it's a vacant building right now, and its intended purposes. We will do re its research and development, but really we focus on the D. Uh, we will do some. We will do development on the products incoming to Lichen uh, to get them ready for manufacturing uh, and for commercial use. Uh, we will do clinical manufacturing as these products, as, you, as I said before, there's over a thousand uh, being developed. As they work their way through the clinical cycle over the next 5, 10, 15 years, they become approved and then they're, they're ready for commercial manufacturing. We will take everything up and, and, and including commercial manufacturing. Uh, projected investment is about $12 million. That includes $10 million in construction costs and $2 million in personal property. Uh, we intend to create 125 permanent full-time jobs over a five-year period. and We'll get into more of a discussion on what they are. Uh, be a blend of talents and skills, but engineering, lab techs, assembly, quality control, logistics, sales, office and administration. It's a fully fledged pharmaceutical company, and would, you'd see everything that you have in a, if it was Merck or if it's a Lichen. Obviously, we're a little spec compared to Merck, but it's, you would see everything that we have there. These jobs are not uh, relying on a college degree, uh, especially in manufacturing. Uh, and, and, and certainly some of the support functions. You know, we're looking for smart people, smart kids, and uh, we'll train them. Uh, no one's going to come out of school knowing what to do here anyway. So uh, we're very happy to take the best and brightest and uh, give them a, a great career, and uh, they won't need to go to four-year school to, to be able to do that. Uh, I know we're going to talk about we'll have competitive salaries and benefits. Um, average salary is somewhere around 100000 not including benefits. Uh, for, the, for that 125 that's up there. So very well-paid jobs, great compensation plan, uh, plan and benefits packages. Uh, it will be, a, we want Lichen to be the place to work. If you want to work in Massachusetts, bar none, they'll want to work at Lichen. That's how we, we intend to keep the culture like that. So I know that there, so Sanofi yes. is doing a lot of, uh, I mean, they're, they're a big, um, big hitter in this area. Yes. Uh, I also know that they're on their way to put as much as they possibly can into Cambridge. Yes. There's a lot of people out in this way that are dying to not drive into Cambridge. I don't so, know when. <laughs> so I think that you'll, I think that it's, uh, I mean, it, as far as Hopkins goes, I think it's great, you know, we'd, we'd welcome you in as a, as a business in town, but I think it's great for you guys too that there's, you know, I know 15 people that work for Sanofi that are poised to give their resignation because they don't want to give, they don't want to drive to, uh, to Cambridge. Yes. And, uh, you know, you're, you'll be able to strike while the iron is kind of 
the whole those will be poised to take them. <laughs> so, but and, that, and that's what I meant, access to talent, and that's specifically what I meant in this area right here. There's a, a ton of ta talent to pull from, and uh, and that's what, really what we want. We want good people that want, want to have a great career and come and work here. It's a lot easier working here than it is in Cambridge. Good road connectivity, too. Better time. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're the, we're the center of, uh, of New England. With, Matt, with the mass bike in 495, we truly are the center of New England, we to get Maine to, well to Rhode Island, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Want to put it up here? Okay. Uh, companies and its employees plan to spend annually with local businesses, certainly in my case, restaurants, <laughs> retail establishments, <laughs> bars. <laughs> Uh, we use all your corporate services, industrial services, and uh, we do plan to become a, and this is something my CFO has been pushed from the beginning, and it's something that my culture is here, and I've worked here before, and we used high school interns, we used college interns, uh, and, and obviously Hopkins would get the nod first for those, uh, but we want to encourage uh, kids in high school to come and understand what a cell therapy manufacturer is and you know what kind of career you could have at a, at a facility like Lycan. But we plan to become an active member of the community, uh, support local programs, and not just monetarily, uh, we'll volunteer our time. Uh, we'll start doing that right away. Uh, food banks, wherever you guys have, uh, for us to you know take part in and contribute. Uh, it's a way to get ourselves out there and, you know, and really give back to the community. We've been very fortunate to have successful careers our, our, our whole life, and uh, you know we'll wind it up the right way. So just to do a recap on some of the benefits to Hopkinton, um, really it would put Hopkinton in the position to attract a, another life science manufacturer. Um, as we were just talking about, it's really almost the bookends, Cambridge, Worcester, and the industry is really growing. Um, in this area, in the Metro West area. So it would be a, a great opportunity to uh, attract this company to a, an under, underutilized property and to really revitalize. You know, that the property, 97 South Street, has been vacant for about seven years. And, you know, as properties become, you know, vacant the longer and longer, they, you know, tend to deteriorate over a period of time. So this would be a way to really spark up some economic development there while increasing real estate tax revenue as well when you talk about an estimated ten million dollar capital expenditure that's certainly going to increase the assessed value of the building and create a positive impact on the local businesses and community and it's really about attracting a great corporate neighbor an important point that doesn't show up here while we're, it's not in these slides right here is that like in, because of the nature of our business, we're a manufacturing services organization. We don't have our own products. We manufacture everyone else's products. So we have no risk of failure. Products that fail do not affect Lycan. So it's not like we're going to come and, oh, we had a couple failures, we're, at, we're going to go out of business. Uh, because it just gets filled with the next product that, that makes it through, through the uh, regulatory hurdles. Uh, so b that being said, Lycan never needs to go away. <laughs> Lichen, really what will happen, the reality is that Lichen will expand as these, these, companies, these products become more viable, as they make it into phase three commercial. For every one of those phase threes that we do here in Hopkinton, the commercial product needs to start and be made there. So that's another expansion. So every one of those that make it is another expansion because we won't have the capacity to manufacture for the clinic, which we're dedicated to doing because there's, the simple truth is now that is the oncology patients right now don't have access to these drugs because we have no one to make them. And, and the guys that do make them, make them very slow. You know, Lycan's focused on throughput, getting as much through as we can to serve as many patients as we can. Uh, so we intend to fully keep the clinical arm constantly running. And as, we, as these products become commercial, we'll do more expansions. And we'll just expand. Obviously, if we, we start here, here's where we're going to be. Mm -hmm. So 10 years from now, it could be a much bigger story than 125. Actually, five years from now, probably be a much bigger story than 125. Right. So you can see there's a lot of opportunity for growth. So the last slide uh, we wanted to focus on is um, on the tax incentives. So as you know, um, as we mentioned, Hopkinton is an economic target area. Um, and there's a program that um, Hopkinton has participated in the past known as the 
Massachusetts Economic Development and Center Program. It's actually been around for 25 years now, um, since 1993. And uh, so again, Hopkinson has participated and offer potential tax incentives to companies. And so tax increment financing, which is known as a TIF, is an exemption on the new, uh, the new growth of assessed value in the new taxes that are generated. So essentially, it's a discount on future taxes. So a TIF does not apply to the existing building or the taxes that the town is currently receiving. Again, it's only on the, the new taxes. And it's a minimum of five years, a maximum of 20 years for any particular length of a TIF, as you may know, um, in a minimum exemption of 1%, and the maximum is 100%. So the town is in the position, based on that capital expenditure, of approximately $10 million on whatever the assessed value is determined to be, the new assessed value, to collect new tax revenue um, over a period of time. So again, it's very important um, that it's uh, to say, again, that it's a discount only on projected future taxes and there is no loss to the community. So uh, where we stand now is uh, we have been working um, with, the, with Norman and his team. And as far as the process, uh, the company and uh, the Norman's uh, team uh, of other local officials um, are will hopefully work out some type of arrangement um, that would be presented back to you uh, to the Board of Selectmen for a recommendation um, to town meeting um, so we do need your support the Board of Selectmen that is required um, and then the as you may know town meeting has the final approval for any TIF proposal and then once town meeting has approved it, then the state um, has final approval because it is a state program. And they also must um, approve any proposed TIF. So that is really uh, the, the background of the uh, project and the proposed plan and the intent to apply for incentives. So thank you very much. Any questions? I'm happy to answer. Well, I just want to say I really appreciate you taking the time and everything you've presented and I hope people at home are, are watching this because we do have the special town meeting scheduled um, to consider and hopefully approve the TIF. Um, but, you know, I just want to say that from everything you said, um, you know, so many aspects of your company are an excellent fit for this community, not only the obvious benefits that you bring, but the type of company, um, uh, obviously the benefits, and also from what you said, um, your corporate philosophy and your reasons for wanting to move, to come to Hopkinton, really mesh beautifully with the kind of community that I believe that we are. And I've been in this town for close to 40 years. Um, part of our culture that I have seen um, has been built on strong business community partnerships. Um, back in the day, it went back to some individual families and family businesses. Times change. Um, those entities change. Um, we've moved into areas where there are more corporate entities, um, but we've always had a strong partnership. We as the town have always um, tried to communicate with our business partners how much we value them. As you probably know, we've every year consistently um, maintained a, a single tax rate that businesses should not be punished in any way that we want. We want to all be on the same footing because they are very important um, and economic partners and social partners for us. And so everything you have said to us, um, from my understanding of the town, is a very good fit for us. Um, both economically and from our own our own uh, culture that I've seen in, in 40 years. Thanks. So I jumped in first. Usually the chairman doesn't do that, but I could, couldn't resist. <laughs> Are there questions or other members from our board, uh, from our members of the board? 
I really appreciate you uh, considering Hopkinton. You know, in, in this era of uh, people uh, trying to attract uh, Amazon and you know, giving, you know, Worcester, I think, was uh, offering the airport and, and everything else. And, and I'm just uh, glad that we can uh, do it with, uh, with just a TIF. Yeah. Um, and uh, because it's just, it's important. We really would like to uh, make uh, Hopkinton the center for, for, for biotech and, and research. Um, you know, we, we actually have modified our, our recreational marijuana law to make sure that we could actually do research for that here. And now with the uh, president just doing an executive order um, allowing hemp, that there'll be additional research that people might pick uh, Hopkinton for. So I just uh, really appreciate you uh, being uh, one of the first and uh, coming in and taking over one of those empty buildings. Thank you. I just want to say I think that the, the bioscience, life sciences field seems to be on the cutting edge these days. Uh, it's an exciting field. My brother is uh, very active in it. And um, in fact, when I was first uh, came here, he gave me the, uh, the uh, advice that we should get certified <laughs> for, for attracting some, some of the biopharmaceutics. So I think this is really exciting. And um, well, I, personally, I look forward to uh, Having your neighbor in town. Thank you. I think this is a great idea, and uh, we sure hope that you folks do, in fact, come to Hopkinton. Uh, I've been on the board for some time now and been through a couple of TIFs, and uh, they've worked well here in Hopkinton. They've worked well for our clients, our, our, our tenants, or our, our businesses coming to town. Uh, I view them as a customer, as a client, and uh, they've worked well for the town, too. So um, as long as we draft it in a way, Mr. Kamala knows what he's doing there. Uh, it'll work for both sides. I'm, I'm excited about that. I do have a couple of questions, and please don't read into them. I'm just trying no, to no, fully fine. understand kind of where we are here. Mm -hmm. So will there be any infrastructure needs uh, from like in to, uh, from the town in terms of water, wastewater, anything like that? No. Uh, water usage, because of the type of manufacturing it is, is uh, a fraction of what was used before in the building. So we've just put in four. We just put 10,000 gallons a day, and that's all use in combined. We won't even come close to using that, to be honest. Yeah, we've got some good infrastructure going yeah. to that site or that right. whole area now uh, from a previous investment that was mm -hmm. made, and uh, so we're we're good there. But I just didn't want to make sure, or want to make sure you guys. Are <coughs> we're we're a low water user. Okay, great. Uh, how about biohazard classifications on site? Anything like that that our fire department? The biohazard uh, be all BL one, BL two. I mean, these products are taken right in the uh, most of the patients. They get their blood drawn right in the Red Cross or any uh, common area in any hospital. So, so nothing uh, extreme or no, and even even the vaccines, whatever we use, whatever uh, we need to do, uh, whatever antigens we're using, will not be uh, put nothing above a BL two for sure. It'll likely all BL one. Uh, all of our waste, because again, it's compact, will all be carted away. Yeah, thank you. Um, how about timing? What's your timing for? what you're trying to do. You may have mentioned that right already. Right now. <laughs> That's the February town meeting. Yeah, right. okay. yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, are you guys going to capital markets to fund this? Or are you doing this internally? Or how uh, We it? have some uh, investors that, uh, not capital markets, but. Okay, but lined up and yes. all good and solid there. I see we're, the We're close. Uh, we're, back there, so. We're very close. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's an excellent uh, opportunity for the town of Hopkinton. Uh, TIFs sometimes can draw a little bit of confusion uh, amongst uh, some of us in town, uh, but I think the, the, the benefits outweighs the perceived uh, risk that some people see with TIFs. TIFs. And uh, I, I know personally that they've worked well in the past, and even when somebody decided it wasn't going to work out and they took off, uh, the TIF still was in place, and the town received the funds that it should have received along the way. So uh, I think it can work out really well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. So, with uh, with your projected growth and um, and everything that's going along with what you presented to us tonight, is it your goal or hope <coughs> that you would someday maybe go to a different building, expand in the area, or, or do you foresee all your business always being in the one building? No, the reality is the one building will last for a while maybe up to five years. Mm -hmm. uh, that could change very quickly though, uh, because of already we know what custom, potential customers we, we will get. Mm -hmm. uh, we could outgrow the building pretty quickly. We can't commit to that because sure, and, no, I understand. for the TIF, but <laughs> yeah. uh, the likelihood is that we will, before the end of the five year period, we will have another building. 
another building. Yeah. And is it, it's your goal to potentially have it in Hopkin? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because uh, with the rest of the senior team in here and the executive team and the headquarters, and really what's critical is the quality system that oversees this, this production, right? Mm -hmm. So the key quality people will be right here. Uh, so what goes through 97? Uh, same philosophy will go through the next building, and we don't want those people too far away from where the original building is. It just makes much more sense that we're in proximity to one another. Could it be on another street? Yeah, sure. Could it be up the street? Could it be somewhere else? Yeah. But and how long do you foresee, if you were to, to expand to another building, how long do you foresee it would take to retrofit a building like that, or would you have to start from scratch? Our guys are pretty quick. If we get a brownfield, if we get a gutted building, uh, we could be up and running in less than a year. Validated and, and making product. I think an important thing now going forward as partners really is to, um, you know, work to make our townspeople aware of the situation and understand, as Mr. Herr described, what a TIF is, what the benefits are. Um, why this is a good thing for the town. People are worried about taxes, so um, we need to communicate and uh, make sure that everybody understands what we're talking about and why we're talking about it um, to hopefully be able to move this process forward in a positive way. It sounds like um, Lycan would make a great partner for the town. We, yeah, we think so. And the state's very much behind this, too. They want a true manufacturer. Mm -hmm. for cell therapy and gene therapy, which doesn't exist. They don't have one of those right now, and uh, Lycan would fit that bill also. And, uh, obviously, being in Hopkins would be great for us. And, uh, great for you guys. Great. Further questions on the part of the board? Do you have questions for us? No, thank you, very, thank you for all your support. We do know that um, there's a quorum requirement for a special town meeting, so uh, we'll be, you know, working also. The chamber has um, agreed. We actually met with the Chamber of Commerce this morning, the board of directors, and they have agreed to um, assist with some outreach and making sure that, you know, it could be a very cold um, February evening, um, hopefully no snowstorms, so, uh, you know, to really uh, gather the, the, the voters um, to the special town meeting. But, Thank you for your enthusiasm in attracting uh, the company to Hoppington. Thank, Thank you, Lynn. We'll, we'll all be working on it. And again, we really appreciate you taking all this time and coming here. And uh, we hope that uh, we can have a beautiful relationship. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your support. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Trail Coordination and Management Committee charge, and I see some people that are here for trail, so I think we're probably safe to move ahead, even though it's a little bit early on the on the schedule. Um, the Board of Selectmen will consider approving the charge for a new Trail Coordination and Management Committee. So we have here, uh, it was in our um, packets, a... Um, draft for the Trail Com Coordination and Management Committee. Uh, don't know if people have had yeah, a chance we beat to this look one at up. it. We beat this one up at the last meeting. We beat it up and we were really anxious to try to get this wrapped right. up so that we can get moving. Um, I know Mr. Lagoy was kind enough to give some feedback to the board. Uh, do members have Comments or input on what has been presented so far? I'm good. I'll we'll speak at once. No, this is, I, I'm, I'm good with it. You know, we, I, I gave a lot of input uh, previously, and it, uh, it all seems to be in here. I'm, uh, I'm just uh, grateful to. Uh, uh, Ms. Lazarus and uh, the uh, members of the uh, uh, Center Trail Committee for, for their input on this and, and, and pushing it along as, as well as Mr. Lagoy. Um, it's uh, it's uh, overdue that we have something like this to uh, mm -hmm. uh, coordinate uh, all the trails in town. 
Well, I know we've been talking about it for a long time. We really needed to get this wrapped up. Um, Mr. Goy, who's had a lot of experience with the trails, sent a note, which maybe many of us saw, um, suggesting perhaps making this draft and getting the committee appointed and then giving further input to the draft. Um, my feeling is it would, and this is just my feeling, that it would be good to finalize something. Um, if a committee gets up and going, there is always opportunity if committee members really, as they go along and start to see things that need to be changed, I would think we would always be open to making modifications. Um, that's my feeling about, about yeah, it. We, we, not keeping it open anymore. <laughs> yeah, the way I see it is we just have to we just have to start it. We've been we've been talking about this now uh, for uh, at least three years uh, that it's been uh, that this uh, that the Senate Trail Committee uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Upper Charles Trail Committee um, has been uh, uh, asking us and they gave us a draft three years ago to start looking at it. So. Um, you know, I'd, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, adopt it immediately. Well, no, before I'll you hold it. I'll yeah. hold it. I, I have. I have one thing. Um, you know, we've been blessed with a tremendous amount of resources, volunteer resources in the town, who do everything from stewardship to trail building to the whole bit. Um, we wouldn't be as far as we are today without the volunteers, and I don't want to lose that. Um, we also recognize the many, many budget pressures that this town has, and we're always looking at what's going to cost, and we're not looking to add costs. We're, in fact, we're always trying to look to see how can we cover, how can we maintain the level of services, for that matter, with, with what we've got. Um, I am a little worried about creating a whole new level of budget obligations, given the ongoing financial situations. Um, item five says make recommendations to the Board of Selectmen and the town manager as to the measure as to the measures necessary and appropriate to maintain and administer the townwide trail system and program, including recommending an annual operating budget, which includes trash and debris removal, repairs, mowing, resurfacing and restoration, prepare an annual management plan for guidance. Um, and I know all those things need to be done. I don't want this to turn into just another large budget item and people feel that, oh, now the town's paying for it. It doesn't need to be, need to be done. Um, I, I don't want to lose the level of volunteerism. I, I had one suggestion would be to add, because further down it talks about a lot of the public involvement in the um, public and private trail groups. Um, I thought of adding an item right after that that speaks to that and says seek and encourage something like seek and encourage coordinate and support volunteer activities in trail construction maintenance and stewardship to reduce trail related costs to the town as much as possible um, that's just one thought to specify that we would like to but uh, have this included. Yeah, um, through the chair, one of the things that, uh, if you noticed, that Mr. Goy, the Goy pointed out that um, there is money available um, from the um, uh, post community agreement mm -hmm. that came out of uh, Legacy okay. Farms, you know, and and that's a kickoff. But you know, we've 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 got miles and miles of trails, and 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 they've been taken care of by a few volunteers, and it's about time that we. You know, we, we talk about trails as being a part, a major part of our uh, of our com of our town's character, mm -hmm. and so we've got to we've got to put some money behind it. You know, it, yes, it's tight tight budget times. It's sort of like when we were talking about the the trees and and and, and uh, tree management. You know, at some point we've actually got to do something before they uh, start falling apart. You know, it, and and. Uh, so we've got to put some money aside for for uh, for these trails. It's it's nice to 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 continue to encourage volunteers, um, but uh, we've we've actually got to put some teeth behind this uh, this committee. I don't disagree with you. That's why we're here. What I'm saying is I don't want this to send the message that now we're done. There's a town trail department that's going to 
pay for everything. I, I, I would like to see a clear statement that we want to still look to get as much of this done as possible. We still need the, that volunteer, those volunteer efforts because, you know, we do have budget issues and, and I just don't want to um, turn this all over to the town budget. So, I don't know. I was just thinking of articulating that, lest someone read this that, oh, well, that's not needed anymore. It's all going to be paid in the town budget. Through the chair? Through the chair. Ms. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Kamala, first. Please. Um, item number 11 on page 2. Coordinate and manage and adopt a trail program, if appropriate, and coordinate volunteer-driven projects. Oh. So maybe that does it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mr. Nazarillo? Through the chair. Um, one of the things that I really like about this document is that this committee is actually making recommendations to us that we still have the final say and we can, you know, we can approve or, or modify. Um, so even when it comes to, to the budget, that is something that we would have the final say over and something that we could modify if needed. I agree with you that the um, volunteerism is, is, we wouldn't be here today if it weren't for all the volunteers and, and creating all these trails. Uh, and I think that's something that we definitely want to keep. I think the idea of the adopt a, adopt a trail idea seems uh, unique in my mind, but I guess you see it in the highways as well. But you know, for signage, people to kind of look after it and take more of an interest in uh, in the trails that are right around their house, I think, would encourage use and, and encourage uh, development as well. I'm good with this. Yeah, um, so I have a couple of questions, if I could, through the chair. Mr. Kamalo, you obviously spent a lot of time as did Mrs. Lazarus on this document. Are you guys comfortable with where we are tonight? Yes, uh, and for a large part, owing to the input that we received from the board, uh, from the various groups in town that work on trails, as well as the one-to-one -one meetings that we had with uh, the chairs of the planning board, as well as the conservation commission. And Mrs. Lazarus, you concur? I do. Madam Chair, would it be appropriate to just, well, I guess I could say something and I'll watch faces. So I'm not aware of any uh, major uh, concerns with the document that we have in front of us from the various stakeholders in the trails community in town. I've seen a couple of emails suggesting a couple of things that we can always tweak at some point, but there's, there's, there's been no major um, uprising against what we're working on here this evening. Thank you. Okay. As long as we don't send a message that the volunteerism is no longer needed and that we've got this covered <laughs> under the town budget <laughs> because it's still needed and we want to try to do everything we can to uh, just keep those costs down. And but, uh, uh, through the chair, is, is, there a, is there a number that we can throw at it at, for a budget at this? No. No, not at this time. I think they need to start doing their work okay. and figure out what's needed. And according to the charge, they would make a recommendation to us. This okay. is what I'd All right. Then I'd like, a, I'd like to make, a, is it, do you have a? a uh, oh, I would request a motion to approve the charge for the Trail Coordination and Management Committee as drafted. So moved. Is second. This, sorry. Go ahead. We have a second? Yes. We do have so a second. So is it, if I could please, is this to um, establish the committee uh, and issue it a charge, or is this to just deal with the charge right now? What am I missing here? Our thinking is as soon as the board, if the board is so inclined, approves the charge, we will advertise for the for committee membership. itself. Exactly. Okay. Got it. Thank you. And in fact, just for people that are listening at home, if that's what we're going to do, maybe I should just read the makeup of the committee so people can know if they're interested that we will be posting it. And this is the, let's see, the makeup that's been listed. Composition. The 
TCMC was that Trails Coordination and Management Committee shall consist of seven members who are Hoppington residents and appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Initial members shall be appointed to one, two, and three-year terms to achieve staggered terms, and all members appointed thereafter will serve three-year terms. No member may serve more than three consecutive terms. The membership shall be as follows. Four members at large, one member who is recommended by the Parks and Recreation Commission, one member who is recommended by the Conservation Commission, and one member who is recommended by the Planning Board. Committees organizations recommending members may recommend more than one for consideration, and those recommended need, need not be members of the recommending body. All members shall have a demonstrated interest in the development, management, and use of public trails. One member or associate member who also has expertise in facilitation and communication is desirable. The Board of Selectmen may appoint up to five associate, those would be non-voting members if desired, in order to broaden the perspective, representation, or to facilitate the charge of the committee. No associate member shall be appointed until one year after a quorum of full members has been appointed so as to allow for time for the committee to fully consider and clarify its purpose and charge. So anyone out there listening who might be interested in this, that will be posted, um, assuming we vote this. That has been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion or further questions? Okay. All those in favor of approving the charge for the Trail Coordination and Management Committee as drafted, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Okay. That's good. Moving on, uh, we have the Hopkinton Marathon Fund Committee <coughs> charge revisions. Yeah, in, in fact, um, a simple update, the Marathon Fund Committee met on the 8th uh, of January. Uh, they are scheduled to meet again on February 11th. Um, at the January 8th meeting, they did review the existing charge, had some discussion regarding the formats in general, uh, as well as opportunities to better clarify the composition and terms section. Uh, the, uh, they indicated to me that they would like to review the charge, the draft charge further, uh, and at that point after February 11th, we would forward some additional comments uh, for the board's consideration. And in fact, and in fact, uh, Carol Nathan, uh, the chair of the Marathon Fund Committee, the Hawkington Marathon Fund Committee, is here tonight. So you are recommending, and the committee is asking that this be postponed for further discussion. But Ms. Nathan would like to speak with us for a moment. Is that for a minute? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Come on up, Carol. Thank you so much. I don't want to rush you. If the boards, if you're not ready, then then by all means. Maybe accidents. I'm a little frazzled. So <laughs> just bear with me. I'm very much. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Do you have a PowerPoint? <laughs> no, God. Um, so we, we met on January 8th, and um, the committee reviewed the documents. Um, our original charge, which Brian, in January 2012, you were really instrumental in helping us craft and create, and thank you. That was a whole lot of work, and it was a great document, and our new proposed um, document. So um, the committee asked to take some time to really look at the differences in the documents and thoughtfully really compare. Um, what it is and what some of the languages were very thoughtful committee um, and we were going to meet on February 11th but now there's a, a special, a special time meeting so we're trying to reschedule that mm -hmm. and um, we'll reconvene and not electronically um, in person yeah. to you know <laughs> to discuss at it so um, we're working on all of that but I would just like to say one thing and that's thank you um, to all of you because and thank you for tonight for the earlier approvals. Um, our committee takes what we do very seriously, and in turn, we get a great reward. And um, we feel very good about giving back what we can. And at the end of the day, um, it's really not a lot of money. We 
it varies year to year. We got like, I think this year, with $24,000, which, you know, in the big picture isn't a lot of money, but to these smaller groups and organizations and kids in the senior centers, it means a whole lot. Um, so thank you for that. And I think, Claire, I think you had a question maybe about scholarships. Well, the way it was written, it was almost yeah. sound like scholarship was the priority, and that there were all these yeah, other I things, think although it, it never just, turns out that way. Well, I think because it's always been done. It's, it, right. it's historical. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I believe since inception we've helped almost 175 Hopkinton kids, um, and it's based on um, athletic, uh, you know, varsity ladder, but it's also based on community service. And we don't know who these kids are, and God bless Maria, because we get the applications and they're, you know, they're blind. We have no idea who they are, and I think John can attest to the night that we sit down and read them, these kids have to write, it's a 200 word essay, which is not very big. So it's oh, interesting, funny. it's really interesting um, mm -hmm. to read a lot of this. And I think it's so meaningful um, for so many of these kids and so many of these families. It's $1,500, you know, um, three women, three men. And we, have, we do have accountability because we just don't give them the money right away. They have to complete their first semester in college before the town um, will forward the scholarship money. So there is accountability. It's not like, thanks for the scholarship, I'm going to go on a gap year. <laughs> you know, so um, we try and monitor it, and it's, it's really important. It means a lot. And so I just want to say, we're working on it. You'll get our document. We're fine. Thank you. Um, but in the meanwhile, you know, just on behalf of the committee, thank you all very much for letting us do what we do. And, and to clarify, you know, where I was coming from, mm -hmm. um, I was concerned that the way the language was written, it might become construed that this is first and foremost a scholarship fund and all the athletic stuff comes later. But I mean, you look at, you know, we, we had an accounting just tonight of all the different things and, you know, that obviously never happens because there's a whole laundry list of other things and we've seen them all come to yeah, us. It's a little exactly. here and a little there yep. and, and, you know, and, and, and that doesn't happen and I don't think that's, you know, that, that, that's a danger. And, and that's uh, part of the joy of it. It yeah. really is. And That's part of the joy of it. Yeah. You know, again, it's not a cast lot, broadly. But, but we can do with it. Exactly. Because, I mean, who can be a... Uh, who can be opposed to scholarships? I'm certainly not. I just want to make sure that it benefits a wide, a wide, and, and obviously and, it does. And again, we try to um, help as many organizations as Absolutely. we possibly can throughout the course of Absolutely. the year with, with yeah. what little yeah. we have. So um, you'll hear from us. We're fine. And in the meantime, thank you all. Thank you all very, very much. And can I just sure. ask one question, though, on the charge while we're right here? I noticed that it, it spoke of um, someone from the school department, and I'm just double checking. It is department. It's not school committee. I think it's school One committee. member was recommended by the school department. I think it should be school committee. I wondered. Yeah, well, that's a really good question. Before we it, see yeah. your... Yeah. It, it, again, it, you, I, I, uh, I'll rely on your guidance. Yeah. Whether in the past it's been somebody, um, some representative from the school department or specifically okay. somebody from the school committee. Make a note. <laughs> I will make a note. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's great. Well, thank you. Well, thank you very, very much. Thank you. I'll see you soon, and you'll be hearing from us. So soon as you're No ready. worries, and thank you, and thank you, Norman. You know where to so find us. I do. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Thank you so much. Okay. Moving right along. Um, next is a public safety request. The Board of Selectmen will consider the police chief's request regarding job descriptions and assignment of duties. Um, this is, where's the proposal? Where is it? Where's the proposal that I had? The motion. The motion, this is it. Okay. Um, so this is a proposal from the chief of police. Um, the chief is not here tonight. The lucky guy is on vacation somewhere warm, and we're not. So um, this is the chief's response. This is a response to a longstanding conversation that has been going on with the department and the board of selectmen. And the chief writes uh, as follows. As the department continues to grow along with the needs of the community, 
We are constantly assessing our personnel structure to prepare for the growth of the department and to meet the community's needs. I respectfully request to reclassify Lieutenant Joe Bennett's current title of Lieutenant to that of Deputy Chief of Police. This move will be a positive step forward for our 26-member police force and 15-member full-slash-part-time communications department. My vision is to enhance the department in the area of communication, chain of command, unity of command, and this will assist in the span of control over personnel and tasks to be performed. Any consideration for this change will be greatly appreciated. So, um, if, if board members have questions or comments, uh, you are free to make them. Otherwise, we will uh, entertain a motion to accept the chief's recommendation. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. through the chair, Mr. Camello, has this topic been discussed uh, discussed with our human resources uh, professional? Yes, it has been. And is this is it is it within our? Um, role and, and responsibility to be able to make a promotion such as this without without posting for a new job etc do you know what I'm saying yes um, in fact we did discuss this issue this specific issue with uh, town council uh, purely as a refresher uh, based on the fact that the town has done this in in past instances uh, for example the assistant town manager went through a similar process uh, and we've done similarly with other town positions. The conclusion by town council is that um, the reassignment of duties and um, reimagining of the title for the position does not necessarily create a vacancy and therefore this is a promotion. Thank you. So another and so what we what we will be voting tonight will be subject to the chief the and the town manager and our human resources department working out the actual job classification and job description those are details to be worked out we will simply be voting uh the chief's recommendation then i uh hearing no further comment i request a motion to accept the police chief's recommendation to promote joe bennett to deputy chief of police subject to the police chief town manager and human resources working out the job classification and job description so moved second all Madam right Chair. mr her so um i think this is a position that we need in town uh regardless of whose name is in front of it uh, frankly, I think that uh, uh, the department has grown substantially over the years. Uh, the town has grown, obviously, substantially over the years. The number of incidents has grown, et cetera, et cetera. So I think for a lot of different reasons, the position of a deputy police chief makes sense, like the position of a deputy fire chief makes sense. Uh, I think Joe Bennett, being the person that steps into the deputy police chief position, is an excellent first um, uh, uh, holder of that title uh, given his uh, experience in the community and his approach and all that, uh, that does go on and, and that is so important in our police department I think it's a great win-win all around here and I fully support this effort I echo those same comments I've known Joe Bennett since the day he got here as a police officer I didn't know him before um, Matter of fact, his first day that uh, that he worked for the town, he and I were on a detail together down on Oakhurst Road when they were putting the sewer in. Um, <clears throat> he's been a, a driving force to to keep that department professional. He's a he's a disgustingly smart individual, and he takes great great pride in his work. So I think this is a, a win win, and uh, you know hopefully we can. We can keep him in our department, and, and um, you know he's he's a, a resource that a lot of people don't know what we have with Joe. Um, so I think we're we're very fortunate to have him in the department, and I, I wholeheartedly support his promotion. 
not agree more. What has been said, we're changing town, growing town. We need to change to better equip ourselves for the future, and I think this is an excellent, an excellent move all around. It will make us a stronger force, and uh, I'm all in favor. If, are there further comments, or shall we move to a vote? Sure. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Excellent. And uh, 2019 annual town meeting, the board will discuss its own annual town meeting articles, including any general bylaw changes. Have we got some specifics to discuss, uh, Mr. Kamalo, or are there things the board members would like to put forth? Again, we, we are compiling our list. Uh, this is simply a reminder to the board that if you have any suggestions, ideas, please let us know. We are hoping that the board uh, will finalize this list at your next meeting. The warrant closes February 5th. So our next meeting is the 28th. Mm -hmm. What would happen if we got a snowstorm? I will pick us up on my snowmobile. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see a snowmobile? Oh. I'd love to ride a snowmobile. Oh, <laughs> well, it's, it's we're, just just gonna gonna yeah. we're just going to hope it's not going to happen. State of emergency, I, I can go anywhere. We would not have a chance to vote them, would we? Unless we had we a special will. meeting. We'll schedule yeah. another meeting. Yeah, we'll schedule a special meeting. Yeah. In fact, what does the brain trust yes. say over Elaine, there in Elaine, the corner? Elaine just reminded me that uh, there, there are two meetings, one on the 25th and the other on the 29th. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And the meeting on the 25th is because of the special, um, town. special town meeting. Yeah. And what are we doing at that meeting? Signing, Signing the, warrant. the warrant. Signing the warrant for the special town meeting. Yeah. So Good. we don't know if it's going to snow on the 28th yet on the 25th, but we'll just... Maybe we can, are you saying that we might be able to discuss the town meeting articles then? No. If it snows on the 25th, but if it snow we will hope it doesn't snow on the 28th. And if it snows on the 28th, we've missed the 28th. We've missed the 28th. We've missed we'll the 28th. We will schedule a, a, no, an emergency meeting. We'll have to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any members of the board that have any topics for that? warrant that they would like to bring up uh, to be considered. Well, Mr. Kamalo said that he already has a placeholder in Shichai and if we, if we yeah. can find any parking available around town. Um, that's one I was worried about. Um, Well, there's there's time that can be communicated. I just didn't know if there was anything right burning that someone wanted to bring up. Mr. Hansen, I personally have been through lots of town meetings. We've had lots of things on the town meeting, and I'm looking forward to not having a lot of town this meetings. This is true. Change. I think that the, the community could use a little breather this year, personally, and so I'm sitting here quiet. Thank you. Understood. <laughs> Can't disagree with you. Okay. Well, hearing nothing, then we. Don't need to stay here any longer than necessary. Uh, uh, next and almost last would be the town manager's report, and that includes the FY20 budget update. Mr. Kamala, what you have for us tonight? I simply want to uh, confirm to the board that we're continuing our meetings with our colleagues from the school committee as well as the chair uh, of the appropriations committee. Uh, so far, the meetings have been very productive. Uh, the last discussion was very encouraging in terms of uh, how we might be able to uh, meet or come very close to the budget guidelines that were set by the board. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So hopefully we won't have last year's budget experience repeated. We will be better positioned to meet our calendar. Yes. Okay, so we have 
the liaison reports and board invites. Um, any reports from board members would like to share? Just kind of tagging on to the budget discussion, uh, Mrs. Wright and I have attended uh, a couple, if not three, of the school committee meetings where they discussed the various budgets at the building level, department mm -hmm. level, and then overall they had a presentation last week. Um, I've seen a couple of additional invites. I'm not sure why I thought they kind of wrapped up their overall budget for to send to us. But anyway, yeah. um, I thought the, the, the discussions and the, the dialogue and the detail that they went through and then presented uh, was very uh, thorough. And uh, I'm confident that uh, the schools are doing everything possible to educate our kids as best they can and spend the money as wisely as they can. Uh, they are under tremendous pressure for budget uh, for the next year's budget, given the size of the growth or the amount of growth in town. Uh, the number of ch the children coming in is is almost astronomical uh, in terms of new growth, you know, for towns across Massachusetts. And uh, I, I think that it was a very thorough process, um, and I was pleased to uh, support them when I was at their meetings. Yeah, I, I would concur with that. I, I think we're just on the meeting invite loop at this point because the next couple ones haven't really, I mean, they've made their yeah. decisions. But, yeah, I, Mr. Her and I have both been at these meetings, and, you know, I just want to say in general, like, commend the school committee a lot for the work they've done this year and the superintendent and the business manager. Um, they, they've had a lot of pressures, and yet uh, they seem quite committed not to repeat the kind of the really difficult 11th hour process that we went through last year and despite the pressures um, have really worked to try to have a smoother process and get us where we need to be so I know it represents an awful lot of work because they haven't had a lot to work with when you look at the amount of dis um, discretionary non-contract uh, obligations that they have to to um, make accommodations with so they, they, they deserve a lot of credit so um, other input no I actually don't have any this week don't have any? I went to a couple of meetings but I'm still waiting to uh, hear some of the uh, outcomes and so I'll, I'll save that one till I get some outcomes yes <laughs> Well, I will just I will just make note of one invite. We've had a bunch of invites, but one invite that's come to the board uh, is from uh, the group goes by HCAA. This is the Hopkinton Chinese uh, Americans Association, and they are celebrating Chinese New Year's on February second at Hopkins School. And it looks like many of our board members jump at the opportunity to have some homemade Chinese food. So <laughs> <laughs> I think a bunch of us are going to go and, and help them celebrate. This is a, a new, a great, we had the South Asian circle come recently, and now the Chinese Americans. It's great that we've got these different, uh, these different ethnic organizations that are forming and, you know, including the town members. And uh, so should be should be a good time. I want to be the head of that dragon that they run around. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you want to be the end. You want to be the head, right? I want to be the end. I'm always the end. <laughs> Madam Chair, um, somewhat along those lines, the um, the mosque on Wood Street is yeah. this Sunday going to be celebrating uh, Martin Luther King Day. No, do it. And they will be having a, uh, a celebration, mm -hmm. and all are invited. It's very confusing because ah, the schools and things are observing it on the twenty first, but the real birthday was the fifteenth. So I would have thought that Matthew would have thought Monday the fourteenth would have been. I don't know. All I know is it usually falls with it right around my birthday, oh. and uh, so yes, I know when Martin Luther King Day comes. Happy birthday! Tomorrow. Happy birthday! We can say happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Are we good? Everybody's had their two cents. Yep. Okay. Uh, any future board agenda items besides going home? Madam Chair, at some point, I assume we're going to be getting an update on the downtown corridor project. I thought it might be this week, but soon. Yes. Um, trying to see what what uh, what which meeting might work best um, as the the next meetings will be focusing on the budget. We'll try and see if the day that we have um, um, engineering facilities and DPW uh, could. 
could be the day we ask Dave also to give an update on, uh, Perfect. on Main Street. That'd be great. Okay. Just 10 minutes. Where are we? Where are we going? Just, yeah. yeah. And, and it was just brought to my attention that there was a uh, commercial tax recalculation or a new algorithm used. Is there any way you can, at the next meeting or something, explain to us what what happened or, or what it is that, that what? Uh, uh, briefly, um, by state statute, the Board of Assessors has the authority to determine the methodology or the formula used for uh, valuing property in town. Uh, I understand um, the Board of Assessors may have made this adjustment um, perhaps a couple years back, uh, and so it took effect the last year, that's why it's showing up now. Um, based on my, my general understanding, um, the, the, the taxes um, that are set for each parcel are driven by the market. No, I just want to make sure that we're, we're fully transparent. Yeah. Uh, we're, 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 you know, here we are, we had like in here today and, and other companies. I want to make sure that we still look like that we are business friendly and that we, you know, we just, uh, if something was done a few years ago that we, that we at some point maybe uh, let the uh, Chamber of Commerce or businesses understand that something's going to be taking effect on January 1st so that uh, it, it doesn't... Um, uh, come as a big surprise when people get their uh, tax bills. Yeah, no, that point is well taken. Uh, and also, similarly, um, if any residents or business owners are watching and have any co co questions, I really refer them to uh, to John Nis, the principal assessor. He's excellent at explaining the formulas. Okay. Uh, if there are no other uh, Positions, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Opposed, that is unanimous. Thank you very much. And I'm assuming everybody signed these nice little forms for Connor. Mm -hmm.